Eu só boto pipap no meu samba Quando o tio santo tocar um tamborim Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope, <laughs> hope you're wide awake now with all the music we've had coming in. My name is Carly Whitefield. I'm the Assistant Curator of Film at Tate Modern, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Tropicalia and Beyond Dialogues in Brazilian Film History. This is a series we've had on since Thursday evening. It's our final day, sadly, but these two last sessions promise to be exhilarating. <laughs> uh, the series is curated by Stefan Solomon. Uh, it's been wonderful working with Stefan uh, over many years to, to put this together and um, yeah we're really grateful for, for hosting the series here at Tate. Uh, I wanted to mention very quickly uh, the first film you'll see in this program, H.O., screened at Tate uh, 10 years ago. There was a retrospective of the films of Helio Odesica. This is not a film by Odesica, it's a film uh, featuring Odesica uh, by uh, Ivan Cardoso, but it's screened in that series, as did the two films of Glaber Rocha that we showed, um, also separately in a retrospective of Rocha in 2007. So it's wonderful that these films are screening again. Uh, first of all, because many of us probably weren't here 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> Uh, but also in the context of, of this series that gives a much greater picture of uh, films being made uh, in dialogue, part of Tropicalia, challenging Tropicalia. It's, the beyond part is, is quite significant in what Stefan has, has put together for us. Um, it's also, for some of you probably already have, have joined us before and have the program guides, but we had a special insert for today um, because uh, George Murau, who, who uh, the last four films in the program, was very generous and provided so many more details of the music in his films and the performers, and we couldn't fit it into the program guide, so we made this insert um, that has yeah, much more details. George designed himself, so thank you for also for your graphic design, George. <laughs> Um, and uh, just a quick thank you to our team, Andrea Lissoni, Maria Gibert, uh, Lori Allen, who's helping us out today. Um, and I, I think that's it. I'm going to pass it over to Stefan to introduce the program. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carly. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity as well to say a uh, huge thanks to both Carly Whitefield, Assistant Curator of Film here, and Maria Gibert, who is a Curatorial Assistant at Tate, um, as well to Laurie, who's our projectionist for today. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll be introducing, I'll introduce these films and we'll have time as well for discussion um, at the end. The, the title for this session today, um, You Discover You're in New York, uh, is a kind of tongue-in-cheek reference to uh, the opening number from Carmen Miranda from Busby, Busby Berkeley's 1943 film, The Gang's All Here. Um, and it also references the fact that uh, some of the, the, the artists who we're going to see uh, in our first film, Elio Sica, moved from uh, between Rio and New York in his career in the 70s. Um, but also, uh, Jorge Moreau, who, whose films we'll be seeing shortly after that, uh, had a a similar trajectory and, and lived and worked in New York in a, a couple of times throughout the decade. Um, I should also say that the music we've been listening to, uh, a song by Raul, Raul Seixas, uh, which is uh, Ivan Cardoso's favorite, favorite musician, uh, and uh, we also heard another song by Jackson do Pendeiro, which uh, Ivan Cardoso made an unfinished short film about, about Jackson. So there are some connections to Ivan's work there. Um, I won't say too much more about um, this film except um, to say that the, the connection with Oita Seeker is very interesting in George's career and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about that a bit later. Um, but I met George uh, this time last year in Rio, um, very fortuitously at a, at a party in Santa Teresa. And it was wonderful to meet him because I don't think I would have discovered his films otherwise had I not been there. Um, we uh, talked about his films and then George uh, very generously hosted me at his house and showed me his work um, and also gave me a bit of an introduction to uh, what he calls his Archivos Impossibles, which we'll also talk about later, his Impossible Archive, um, and his uh, various collection of uh, el uh, elements that he's, uh, and artifacts and films and writings that he's picked up over the years, among other things. Um, but Perhaps that's enough, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a lot later, but for now, uh, let me introduce uh, George Morel. George. Hello, good afternoon. 
First of all, I'm very pleased to be here. It took a very special uh, expert, young man like this, to find me in Brazil because uh, I used to be kind of hidden from all the circumstances of repression and my style of work. So it was really a great pleasure to meet Stefan and uh, who, who was kind enough to invite me here with four of my trash films. These films were made, <clears throat> sorry, uh, in the early 70s. And uh, uh, the, especially the first two ones, you're going to check down there. They very poor in technical quality because I don't give a, sorry about the word, I don't know a, a better way to say English, but I don't give a shit about technical. I really like the content of it, the impression that makes it. If it's blurred, it's out of focus, I don't matter. My films were filmed, that's a redundance. <laughs> In separate, maybe most of you don't know that, small format. We use small cameras. Nowadays, you have the digital cameras. Now, by that time, a small separate camera is like a portable pistol. Because in Brazil, in those days, anything bigger than that, a 60 millimeter camera, if you go out in the street, you would immediately be confronted with a, a bigger arm. Or, gun from the repression. So it was a, a way of uh, registering these things. There's another thing that I praise very much. It's part of my work. Uh, I don't think it's a virtue. It's just a style. I never edit my films. They were edited in camera. And uh, those of you who know separate format, uh, there used to be some cartridges of three minutes long. You put like a bullet in a pop up and fear. So if I have money to buy one cartridge, my film would have three minutes. Two cartridges, six, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, there's this characteristic. They are shown the, as they were filmed. No editing. And uh, uh, the incident sounds happen occasionally. To make it short, because you're gonna, I hope you <laughs> gonna feel, see the film. They are full of. Uh, uh, they are kind of homage to Spielberg, which you all know that make a lots of special effects. My films are plenty of special. Defects. Thank you. <laughs> now. Oh, yeah. Boy, imagine. Immediately after this, this session is done, about 4 o'clock, I hope uh, we, we have the opportunity to talk. At 4 o'clock, outside date, these curators, Stefan, Carly, Ma, uh, uh, Maria, uh, I don't know if they will keep their jobs after what um, we are going to do. We're going to put fire <laughs> at the entrance of Tate Modern, of course, metamorphotic, with some candles to light up here. Small candles, a quick uh, performance happening. So hopefully that we, we can enlighten the darkness of censorship, dictatorship, and cultural repression that's uh, getting again in Brazil nowadays. So we were all invited, 4 o'clock, after my films and before Noilton films and Zé Celso Martinez Correa is not uh, by, it's a hyper incidence that you're gonna put small candles to 
tried to enlighten Brazil, and this direct reference to the film of uh, Noilto and Zé Celso that's called Rei da Vela, the King of Candles, right? The last thing, as my, my work is completely loose, unorganized, anarchistic, I try, I'm trying, I always prefer to make it than organize and not even to show it. Uh, he, he provoked me to organize and show. Anyway, so, but I decided some time ago to put some order on this chaos. So, uh, we're going to witness one of these trials of bureaucratic organizing of the Archivos Impossibles. Here's my stamp that I'm going to stamp this catalog. This catalog. That's mine, that's mine, and that's his. Okay, so much for that. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. Well, now I'd like to invite to the stage uh, Georges Moreau. And uh, it was very remiss of me not to announce this at the beginning, but we also have another guest, uh, George's friend of 45 years, uh, the British Shakespearean actor who lives here in London, uh, Michael Wade. So please welcome George and Michael to the stage. I'm going to put this a little bit further because uh, his English is much better than mine, so uh, <laughs> I have to have some program. So, uh, we can understand you fine. But oh, I'm glad you can understand because sometimes I can even understand myself. These films were made in the 70s. As I told before, in a very precarious situation. I'm sure most of you know that by that time there was a coup d'etat that stayed for 20 years. Right? From 64 to 84, these films were made between 72 and 79, and I had this place after being to exile for some nine years. I found this place in Lapa, maybe some of you know, I'm sure, Stefano and Mike uh, know, that was abandoned uh, loft that uh, would be demolished. Uh, the Brazilian had this mania of demolishing things and getting so-called new ones and bigger ones like Maracanã and the Rio Niterói Bridge, etc. It's just a mania. I consider it underdeveloped mania uh, to compensate that the uh, pretentiously big things. So anyway, uh, as this gonna would be demolished in six months, I was kind of squattering in. And as also, it's a Brazilian characteristic that just people say things, and uh, politicians, of course, although this impregnates the people too, that talk and don't do it. So I stayed, instead of six months, I stayed 10 years there. So that's the background scenery of uh, the first two films. Uh, this place was a, a kind of uh, creation, uh, it's a laboratory of creation. Uh, I used to live there during the you know, use, work, hate, love, make love, lots of it, fortunately. And uh, well, it, I was impregnated for the atmosphere. And that was the, the prehistory. Then, as I said, come this brilliant young <laughs> man, uh, Stefan, that I don't know how, uh, but it doesn't matter. He discovered me there because I had this uh, mania. I'm a compulsive doer, you say, fazedor. And uh, never uh, cared about organizing what I did, what I used to do in film, theater, newspaper, I'm right through, uh, but then 
All of a sudden, I said, if I don't organize that, nobody would do it. I have uh, several kids. One of them is a brilliant filmmaker, prize filmmaker, Javier Mara. Just a little parenthesis. Uh, that, uh, all of you, of course, that are interested in Brazilian cinema knows the famous word by Glauber Rocha. That's one camera na cabeça. Uh, one idea in the head and a camera in the hand. So this son of mine made a film on the uh, manifestations in 2013 that was called One, uh, 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 one Camera in the Hand and a Mask of Gas in My Face. So anyway, uh, going further on that, uh, these films, the first films were made in Rio, the other, uh, the other, the last two ones were made in New York. And this was, they were from your second time in New York? Yeah, oh, several times. This is <laughs> the first time I had to run of it. Uh, maybe you can launch this book here. Part of it is that this you guy, it's, uh, well, well, I don't, uh, well, you know what, eh? Why don't we, do you want to talk about the, what's in Brazilian Connection, the, the, well, uh, the, the uh, life in New York in yeah. the early 70s? How I, uh, uh, yeah, that's very pertinent. 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 Uh, so that's very pertinent because that's when I came back from the exile. Uh, I was running from those nice persons from FBI and Interpol. <laughs> uh, but uh, I... I I, I made it to Rio after a long time running from them because I used to do some... Uh, <laughs> I always been fond of uh, alternatives. Now, I never fought for a long time, the conventional thing. By the way, I have to, to step. That's a very nice convention situation and uh, convention organization. Only Stefan could do this to me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, and then uh, um, I was doing some kind of uh, commercial alternative. Alternative um, business operation. Alternative <laughs> kind. No, you have to tell him. He has a, yeah. some pronunciation. This is a brilliant friend of mine for hundreds of years ago, and besides that, a well-known actor, a Shakespearean, a Shakespearean, that's good, and I just built it, a Shakespearean expert, so that's Shakespearean. I always said it, no, no, this thing about the alternative. A certain kind of alternative business operation, which we won't go into. <laughs> Can you dig that, this, this nice pronunciation? Anyway. And uh, so, uh, so I came back to Rio and found this place, and what it was the prehistory of these um, travel tricks. And so I found this place in Lapa. Some of you, I'm sure, you know. Now, the Lapa is a sacred place in Rio. You know, uh, uh, it's a now it's a buffon, an alternative place. This guy that's hiding there, no, Hilton also he used to live there, was frequent uh, to this place. Uh, so uh, that's what it happened, this place. And what are you talking about? So that's, that's, and that's where the first two films were shot in the long Ah, yeah, the yeah, that, it, uh, that's where the first two, two films were shot. The uh, Apatria, Apatria, just short to make it short, we have time to think. Once I be here, I have to obey this, yeah. the, this timing thing. Anyway, uh, Apatria, the first of films, the first of these films, it's a three minute films. I think I said that before, but anyway, quickly. Uh, my films are edited on camera. So uh, the, this cartridge of Super 8, which was the support, they used to have three minutes time. So if I have money to buy a cartridge, my film would be be three minutes long, which means that I always made the editing, the cutting camera on my head and camera. 
have a nice scriptures. Uh, Stefan knows that Carlos Alberto Matos, that he praised me with the definition of, instead of blah, 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 all this I'm talking to you. He said, George, your films are, again, linking with Glauber. It's with a camera on hand. Make a movie. Right here in the head. Movie all. And a movie all on the head. So I <laughs> had it on the head. Boom. And uh, 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 this first film I made, like, the first, very first one, these are three minute films, I was opening this exposition, this exhibition, this exposure. We've been all night long trying to, to, to choose the words. Anyway. Uh, to, play on words, to get a play on words as it was in Portuguese. It wasn't. Yeah, uh, and uh, 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 when I was opening this show, this guy came as a friend of mine Tao, with a camera on his hand and a vomiting on his guts. That was the origin of that film, uh, the first one, which immediately takes to the second one, which is the exposure of the exhibition, of the exposition, or whatever you want to call it. And these one were made in Lapa. So cut the, the, the two other ones, the, the Shaven Sand and uh, Costumes La Casa were made in New York. Uh, as soon as I gathered that I could go back to New York from where I was kind of expelled by those nice institutions, FBI, CIA, I don't know exactly why, I just make some alternative, make a alternative <laughs> business ventures. Yeah, yeah, the, the alternative. And uh, so that, that's the prehistory of that. Yeah. Uh, to make it short, the, the, uh, I said it before, um, uh, and uh, because of this curator here, I almost forgot about it. But anyway, 40 years later, I could revive this, that's experience on the road. And, uh, well, the rest you have seen it. It's as good or as bad as it was done it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Georgie. Um, I've known this reprobate, as Stefan said, for about 45 years. <laughs> And uh, my um, association with Brazil, indeed with Morão, as he is more simply known, dates back to when Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil were exiled and lived here in London. And one day in Portobello Road, I met a friend of mine who said, I'm working with a Brazilian musician called Gilberto Gil. I'd never heard of him. I'd never met a Brazilian. I'm going to his house now. Would you like to come? And that day changed my life. And when the, uh, the by the way, the, the place was just full of the most amazing looking Brazilian women. And all my band of brothers, my English band of brothers, we all married Brazilians and we went to Brazil when the government liberated the return of Caetano, Caetano and Gil. And then I met Morão very shortly after that. And I knew the loft very well. I never participated in any of the filming there, but I did see exhibitions and so on. Now, just... To, just to explain that the loft is this place, uh, yeah, squat. This, it, it was a squat, but it lasted, it was supposed to last six months, it lasted 10 years. And it was the most extraordinary place. Now, the reason uh, that I, I wanted to just explain a couple of things. Um, I have seen, apart from last night when we were working on this, um, I've seen all the films that have been shown here. Now, if I had seen them as a young man, I would have been full of protest. And those of you who are young, I hope you are, because that's how the world goes round. But as an old man now, um, I have to say that a lot of what I've seen in this cinema in the last few days has filled me not with protest, but with despair. Cardinal Newman, uh, the, a great master of the English language, said 165 years ago uh, that the physical world revolves uh, year by year and begins again. 
but the political order of things does not renew itself, does not return. It continues, but it proceeds. There is no retrogression. Now, I understand what he's saying, but in the, in the, in the current climate, not just in Brazil, but especially in Brazil, in here, here too, I just find that it, we're, 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 we're going backwards. We're, we're, we're regret I mean, on the news now here, they're talking about, oh, this government could fall just like it did in the 90s and so on. And Brazil now is, is, is um, uh, in t terrible upheaval. And uh, I just want to explain lastly why that interjection of that wonderful ending of, of T.S. Eliot's uh, extraordinary poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, uh, why um, I, I decided to, that was my input, but I decided to put it in, uh, my only input, I should say, was because um, he, that, is the, he, that is a poem about a, a man, an aging man who is in despair. And uh, it, it is really, I find it, I've known it all my life, and I find it personally very despairing in the same way that, you know, I despair, and I hope, as I said, I hope that you, those of you who are young are not despairing, because we must protest. But I just feel that um, we are all, with this cacophony, you know, the, the last line of the poem, till human voices wake us and we drown. And we are drowning in this cacophony of conflict. And today, you know, uh, President Trump and his rocket man, yet again. And, you know, I think I've probably made my point, so I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Um, per perhaps um, we might have time for some questions, but I just wanted to ask either of you, I mean, again, about the films, the importance of a lot of the Super 8 films in Brazil um, for any artist working in Super 8 it's not just to do with the production, but also the exhibition. It's really important uh, to sh well, that you sh not only made the films in the loft, but you showed them in the loft yeah. too, and that you provided live sound as you did today. So I wonder if uh, Michael and Georgie, if you'd like to talk about the, the, the sound and the way you work with the image, because you put a lot of work into, into the, what we just saw. Sure. Uh, the thing was, sh is it going on? Uh, Super 8, uh, most of you don't know. Nowadays you have these portable cameras, digital cameras, that to my perception, uh, the, all they, if they lack something, is just to ring a buzzer and say, hey, film there, it's all automatic, right? The focus is in the water. By the time, there's a correspondent of Super 8 little cameras, that's what I call the portable pistols. Huh? Uh, because at that time, anything bigger than that would be re uh, immediately repressed. So we could uh, register those who were interested in that with this little camera, several kinds of uh, images or situations and so on. Then, that's very pertinent uh, observation of uh, Stefan. That, so, okay, you filmed that. Then, uh, of course, it was uh, pellicule. So as you would go through development, uh, pro uh, laboratory process, it's not immediate, uh, you see that immediate. But that's really, and, uh, okay, you filmed it, and why are you gonna show this? Of course, not in a commercial circuitry. Then I was, uh, have the luck of finding this place, that loft that Michael mentioned, and, uh, it's explicit, so I have a, a, a like a, what we translate in feet, over 200 square meters, a quite large place in Lapa, where I lived, and show it's a creation of laboratory and exposure of room, a screening room, let's say, like that. And uh, that was, uh, was very difficult because uh, even the so-called Cinema Nova and so on, so on, which is in a bigger format, you see, format, they used to, you know, been since then, fighting against, you know, we, we have no place to, you know, to show the films. And I know most, uh, some of them were my colleagues even in, in school, 
but I have a slight different uh, opinion on that. I said, well, okay, you make a film in 16 millimeters or even in 35 millimeters, but when you had, we seen it yesterday, or the day before, I said, yes, sir, was it was Rogério, this gazelle, brilliant, fame, uh, work, no? Uh, we, uh, uh, it's a mark of it. But uh, then uh, Neville, Bressani, Eliseu Visconti, so they're fighting. You know, we can't show that. I, but not, uh, it's not uh, better. I don't consider it better. It's just my style. You, 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 you do a, a, a film that's not commercial or commercial. Uh, that's not an understand. And then you're going to, you wish to do your production be shown in a commercial circuitry. Because this, this is a circuitry uh, 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 where the, the, the rules are uh, uh, established. So I, my, my, my way of doing is that I don't, I never had it on this thing. You go to the Embra film and all this nah, thing in Brazil. I have to make a parenthesis here. In Brazil, the state of Brazil is just built against the people. They is, uh, the state of Brazil, the establishment of Brazil is built to uh, enhance themselves, to keep them in power, so they have nothing to do with what uh, here is not that's perfect, but in English, right? Uh, 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 you have the the the, the, the appeal to that uh, since the, the social security and everything for the people the, in Brazil, the state. I don't know if I make myself clear. The state, the organization of state, is just made since the Portuguese people, and I'm well placed to to say it because I'm a Portuguese uh, uh, descendant. Uh, the Portuguese people would go there, pick the famous Pau Brasil, and, and, uh, and pick it, extract it. And worse of it, they wouldn't even have it. They would send here to England because they were... Como é que é devedores? They own it. Né? Own it. <laughs> but anyway, so they pick it. Differently from the United States, with all the folks that they came from here, the 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 yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Well, that's right. Uh, of course, maybe I'm we have But that, uh, just to finish the, the, the thing. So, uh, uh, okay, no, yeah, I think they understand or not understand the same thing <laughs> for my sport. No, go ahead. You have to. <laughs> Would anyone like to ask a question of George or Michael? You have any question? Oh, I'm very glad to. Oi. Oui. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oi, tudo bem? Part of it. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> e aí? <laughs> então, <laughs> é, eu estava eu vendo que é, os filmes que a gente viu hoje é, aconteceram no seu loft é, mais ou menos ao mesmo tempo que o Hélio Itzica e o Neville de Almeida estavam produzindo as Cosmococas. É, você diria é, que essa... Hum, Esse jeito de apresentar que você está descrevendo estava na mesma linha do processo deles, é, transformando o cinema em instrumento. Eu acho que o Hélio tem um texto sobre isso que diz é, o cinema tem que virar instrumento, é, que puxa mais para uma coisa mais a, experiencial do corpo, talvez, e aí é, se toma uma proporção instalativa, de uma certa forma. É, eu, eu não sei quão próximos vocês foram e eu tô curiosa. Qual, qual o quê? É, com o Navio e o Hélio. Ah, sim. Ah, vocês ah, estavam ah, trabalhando é, posso, próximos nessa época? Posso, posso tradução? 
Okay. Can you translate a bit? Uh, you translate what I say. No, oh, no, can you? Can you <laughs> can 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 no, no, okay. can you? <laughs> The, the question is related to Elioid Sika and Nevili Jalmeda's uh, Cosmococos experiments that they conducted in New York, in Manhattan, in a loft space as well, uh, which were earlier in the 70s, and how they relate to George's films, especially to do with the, in, the corporeal it, aspect. Yeah, installative aspect. Thank you. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, Elio, Elio Neville and uh, myself, who have a very common interest in, uh, let's say, lines of production and careers <laughs> of expression. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 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 I was uh, in New York in 72, and was living in Second Avenue in '9, uh, and uh, 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 what was the common, uh, I think that's the, the core of you ask, uh, uh, was that uh, alternative ways of, uh, uh, I'll try to do the translation, carrying uh, the carreras, you know, for you of, don't know. The carrying the lines. <laughs> carrying the lines, exactly. What's your name? Uh, Alessandra. Alessandra, that's it. Carrying the lines. <laughs> I used to say there. <laughs> A road is uh, diluted several thrillers, how is it? Uh, thrillers, several thrillers, and a lot of uh, carriers, uh, <laughs> carry, <laughs> a lot of flying is carrying on. And uh, uh, Edu used to live in Second Avenue by that time. And I used to live in Nigeria. Okay. And uh, Elio, uh, 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 I'm glad you asked that to remember that. Well, uh, January 73 in New York, oh, in New York, first of all, the, the, the drug, in Brazil, there was an exposition or exhibition or exposure. I have a film, it's an expert language. Really. It was a, uh, one of these things of Picasso in Rio de Janeiro. And it was censored by the military dictatorship uh, because, uh, uh, just to give an idea, it's a factual. You know, New York's time is a standard, it's not, a, not like even, it's a, it's a standard, uh, going to call size, you know, of, uh, of uh, it's not a big, it's a big, and one-eighth of a page of New York Times, or any this format big, it's uh, in the second page, now you have the front page and you turn it, it's an uh, important space. One-eighth of this New York Times edition of January, I think 10th, January 10th, was dedicated with the title, Brazil, Bans sale of Picasso's erotic prints. And uh, of course, the New York Times, they, they, they're very smart on editing. And they put there a photo of a print of Picasso that had no, no, not erotic at all. And uh, I was living there because I so, so uh, America, a uh, uh, Brazilian to be, como é gozado? Make, be, be made fun of in the United States, but it's not uh, very comfortable. And people, oh, how come that? You, uh, I think you understand, uh, uh, you're from a country that censored Picasso. So you are uh, the aim of, uh, and uh, the, I, I only, uh, the, the, the answer I had, if I, why do you think I'm here? I'm not there. But immediately afterwards, I, 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 I roughed a uh, uh, little writing against that uh, absurd censorship. And you, and you made a petition as well. A you petition, yeah. And as I used to, to live in West, uh, East Village and uh, Alan Gisbank, uh, I'm sure most of you know, was my neighbor. And I wrote a few words in uh, protest against that. 
sent these words to Ginsberg, to Allen, and uh, he uh, edited, Sorry. which was my, my pleasure to be copy desk by Allen Ginsberg. Right? <laughs> Appropriated by Allen Ginsberg. Eh? Appropriated by Ginsberg. <laughs> Appropriated. Appropriated by Ginsburg. Appropriated by Ginsburg. She said, oh, yeah. because in between me and Ginsburg, there were the people from uh, called some uh, called UPs. Uh, UPs were the Youth International Party. They were they have the same head of hippies, but they are more into politics. We used to go to new uh, the P on the on the como é que é o negócio da militar hein business yeah P on the thing it were hippies were the hippies with a political conscience you, should we just I'm just conscious of the time because yeah. we we because yeah we, uh, I'm again it's just so, but after uh, we can talk about, but the thing is that just to finish, this and the petition was signed by several uh, not well known people like Miles Davis, John Lennon, and Yoko. And uh, sorry, but I take from seconds. Uh, I think it's part of most of people don't know. John and Yoko were married in uh, bureaucratically. And of course, you know, in Brazil, the the, uh, the women takes the name, you know, aquela coisa, you know, of the, and uh, they were show together the John uh, uh, Yoko Ono. She took Lennon, and John signed my de, we call petition like John Ono Lennon too. Just a, a little curious. So I'm going to show you because stories. If you went to Archivos Impossible by Moreau on Facebook, etc., etc. Go ahead. Can I and just say one thing yes. about censorship? Just one, I hope, wonderful note about censorship in Brazil is that during the dictatorship, the great Chico Buarque, uh, most of you probably know who he is, a wonderful singer and composer and a lot of protest songs. He had many, many songs that were banned during the dictatorship. And so he used to get on stage and he would say, I was going to sing such and such a song, but I can't because it's been banned by the dictatorship. So I'm going to whistle it. And he would whistle it and the whole audience would sing it. And I think that is a wonderful comment on the spirit of the Brazilian people when faced with, with uh, the heavy dictatorship that they were faced with. And I just pray it isn't going to happen again. Would you have one last question or not? I, th I think we have time for for one more question. Quick. It's very quick and with a quick oh, and with a quick response. But a lot of a, a lot of the things that George is talking about as well are in his uh, memoir, shall we say, Brazilian Connection. So yes, and with two of two of the chapters of which are printed in the series catalogue. So if you'd like to know about some of the stories that George is, is talking about, then that, that's in there as well. But Nara, if you have a question. Or make yeah. a petition to for me to, to edit the book in here. Hi. Is, uh, I had uh, two questions, but I'm just going to be very quick because we have no time. Yeah. So I do have um, uh, 200, uh, 400 candles here to do this performance after. Uh, uh, my, I would like to ask uh, George and um, you know, Hilton, no, Hilton. because I, I was, I mean, I was, uh, thank you, Stefan, for this opportunity. I was just so amazed that, that to see these films, uh, you know, throughout this uh, week. And uh, had the opportunity to have a, a chats with George as well, and um, and what's uh, um, it, it's so much uh, uh, like parallel to what's going on in Brazil today. We we live like darkness in there now, and uh, we have a group here called Democracy for Brazil. We we've been fighting against the coup since uh, 2016, before March 2016, and we're doing uh, we're trying to. Uh, to, to get some lights, and that's why they 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 going to do this uh, this performance there. But uh, I I just uh, we saw in the film today in one of your films it says SOS Brazil, and my suggestion, and if you wanted to write these words or whatever that words in that uh, in that that um, uh, one of your films, that's what that's that's my question. I had another questions, but I, I, 
I can I can ask you, but the difference between what's going on now, uh, like we had this ch this conversation, but I think it is nice to talk that uh, by in the 60s and the 70s, the resistance and the, the subversive uh, movement. What, what's the? Can you just say? What, <laughs> give you some advice to young people today, what can we do to, to what can, uh, they can do to, uh, not we, because I'm not that young, so the, what they can do uh, to try to get some light in Brazil. Thank you. But, uh, but, but very, so but very, very briefly, very because very we, need, very we need to go and we need to go out the yeah, front. To, yeah, to this uh, manifestation of NARA, it's a, uh, uh, very uh, good strength, uh, uh, militant, political militant. He's been here uh, uh, ages here, 20 years ago. But now, that's the, uh, the difference, uh, you ask what the difference between, that's no difference. The state of Brazil is the same. It was built off to maintain the power. The, the, of the people that runs the state, no matter what kind of uh, government or politician, the state, the structure we have here in England, in France, or European, probably, that the state has somehow accomplished to fulfill the, the vibe, uh, health, the needs of the people. In Brazil, the characteristic of the state is that they don't give a shit about the people. They all people they are all built up to maintain their status. That's it. nothing said. What are uh, What can we do? Is just uh, build up an uh, alternative way of living without. Now, I used to say I'm very radical about this. We talked about that. that we, uh, not uh, 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 having anything to do. Noilto had this experience. In Brazil, we have uh, come on, editors, net to Embra Film, etc. I don't, I, uh, uh, a little more radical before, but now uh, he, he complies with it. Fuck the system, fuck the state. You find your own way to create your things with the alternative an independent people, if you have to sell uh, hot dogs or marijuana or whatever, you build your own life and create your own art. That's all I have to do to say on this. Thank you. Okay. Well, on, on that note, I think we should um, hold it there. Um, as Nara mentioned, uh, Noilton and George would like us to go out the front of the Tate, in between the Tate and the, the Thames, where they'll be um, making a manifestation or a happening. Yeah. And then at five o'clock, we'll be back here, so very shortly, in the cinema again, uh, where Noilton will be introducing uh, the film that he co-directed with Jose Celso, Jorge da Vela, uh, which is a fantastic, fantastic film, and I really commend it to you, so please, um, do come back here for that screening and we'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>